Hello guys, this is PanzerMice36. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I weathered and graffitied up this gondola recently. This was a fun project that I did in just a couple of evenings with some fairly basic effects and products, and the result is actually very, very realistic looking, so I decided to share it with you guys. This is a modern era gondola that's been left in the wrong neighborhood for a little too long, so lots of graffiti on it. And it's also, as you can see, pretty beat up and rusted inside and out. But it was all done with some very straightforward effects, so I think you guys will enjoy this video. And maybe you'll pick up some tips for your own models. Alright, so here is the gondola we're going to be weathering in this video. This is an exact rail Thrall 2244 gondola that I bought a number of years ago. When I bought it, I repatched it for Union Pacific, as you can see here. And I did a little bit of, you know, dirt and dust on the bottom and painted the trucks. Just the usual stuff you do right away to make it look like it's going to fit on your layout. Recently also I did replace, or I guess add, the coupler cut bars using Plano and Tangent parts. I always like to do this because this has a lot of detail to the model. And I also added some Tangent brake lines to the car as well. So this, like I said, adds a lot of detail to the model. I do this on all my cars and makes them look a lot more realistic. Um, but this video isn't supposed to be about detailing, we're going to be weathering. So I think we should get started on actually doing some weathering now. For the first step I'm going to take this AK Gen 3 acrylic paint, which is light green, and I'm going to apply it to make a fade. And this looks really bad, <laughs> don't worry, um, I know what I'm doing. I'm applying this as just kind of like a bit of a messy coat over the inside areas of all these panels here. And like I said, my goal here is to fade it and make the green look like it's been bleached by the sun and you know, it fades into a more lighter green. This looks really bad, I know, but as you can see, as I start to like blend it in, I'm not, I'm not really repainting it, I'm just kind of adding like a thin layer. And as you blend it in here, you can see that it actually ends up looking good. So here's the result, you know, it still doesn't look perfect, but of course there's more weathering to go on top of this, but that green actually has quite a nice effect. I do the same thing with white on gray covered hoppers, for example. All right, now I'm going to take this AK Gen 3 Saddle Brown, which is a light red rusty color. I'm going to paint uh, the ladders and grab irons and stuff. I'm doing this because I have a reference photo from the Exact Rail website of the same kind of gondola and I thought it was really cool that the ladders were just like completely rusted or were painted red I'm not sure so I did that and then I also painted the photo etch details here uh, for the coupler cut bars and there we go you can see I did all the little handles and the, the brake wheel and ladders and so on again there's gonna be more weathering later this is all just the initial steps now I've got the same color AK Gen 3 Saddle Brown, the light red rust color, and I'm going to start layering in all these horizontal scratches and scrapes and otherwise damage to the paint. Like, like I showed in the photo there, there's a lot of that all over the sides of the gondola, so I'm just going to start here. Just making horizontal lines with my, with my paintbrush. When it comes to doing chipping effects like this, just let the brush do it. Don't try to like think about what you're doing in paint chips. The brush will make nice scrapes and everything on its own. All right, so after about an hour of just painting lines, and you can see that we have some nice weathering on our gondola. The initial scraping along with the, uh, the green fade definitely has a nice look. I mean, we've just gotten started, so you know I'm just showing you how it looks right now. But we're definitely going to make this look even better with the following weathering steps. All right, now here comes the first controversial part. I'm going to paint graffiti on my rail car. I know every time I post a video and there's graffiti in it, there's always somebody who's like, ah, graffiti is vandalism, don't promote it. Okay, if you don't want to do graffiti on your rail car, just skip this step. But I'm just trying to replicate some photos and, and whatnot, so I'm painting some graffiti. If you don't want to, you can copy this whole video and just not do the graffiti and you'll still have a nicely weathered car at the end. 
as you can see I'm just painting this on with some white acrylic it's an AK Gen 3 white paint using the same brush I use for the chipping and I'm just painting on these things with red and black and white graffiti is a little bit tricky but you know a little bit of practice and you can get some nice results and usually you can just make them look like gibberish because you can't really tell at 1 to 87 scale what it actually says if it's a, just a little scribble tag like this so I have some photos next to me for inspiration and I just kinda copy sort of what it looks like and I don't really care as long as it looks decent you know it'll, it'll do its job so now here is our car with the previous weathering effects and now with some graffiti on top again if you don't like graffiti just ignore this step and you can do the rest of the weathering and you will have a nice result also this is our first round of graffiti we're gonna apply more later and that'll give us some kind of more aged graffiti with this stuff which will be covered by some more weathering later all right now I'm gonna do some dust effects on the side and I'm gonna use an oil paint for this this, this is a fancy modeling oil paint it's a MIG MO oil brusher with an applicator and all this stuff you don't actually have to have a modeling oil paint you can use an artist oil paint this Winton brand uh, Windsor Newton Winton line works well just get a buff color but I have modeling oil paints and they dry a little faster on plastic so I use them anyways I've got a large brush here same one I used for the green fade earlier and the effect here is it's kind of like the green fade earlier but it's a little bit different because I'm using an oil paint so it has a longer time before it dries the acrylic paint will dry you know in a couple of minutes maybe this is more like a couple of hours so I have a long time to work this in and adjust how it looks and get this dusty coating looking how I want so I work it in the corners and then start to streak it down a little bit and I'm really just going for almost like a tint on the finish to make it look a little bit more dirty and the good thing about oil paints is you can just wipe them off the ribs with your finger like that because they take so long to dry so I just went through on all the sides here and as you can see just brushed in some of the oil paint this is just to get the car looking a little bit more dirty now you might be wondering why I used an acrylic for the green fade earlier and now I'm using oil paint for the dust now why wouldn't I use oils for both or acrylics for both the reason is that the green I used earlier for that fade as an acrylic it'll be a lot more opaque and it will cover much better so I wanted to get that dark green looking a lot lighter so I wanted that good coverage the oil paint is a lot more transparent and it really just adds a tint on the model without you know covering up anything really it's just gonna make everything look a little bit more dirty and and do a little bit of a fade but it's not gonna really cover anything up or change the color too much now I've got AK Gen 3 Hull Red which is another red rusty color but it's darker than the one we used before which was Saddle Brown so using the darker hull red color I'm gonna go and apply a second layer of chipping and it's gonna be inside the previous chips the reason for this is that I want the previous chips which are the lighter brown color ones I want them to look like they have more depth this could be exposed red primer or it could be rust forming in the paint scratches it can be anything you want but it, it's still gonna look like this this two color chipping effect is very common on modeling tanks and so on and I do it a lot there and I like to transfer it here because it definitely makes the chips look a lot more realistic and like I said have a lot more depth to them so I'm just painting a little bit of that darker color inside the, the previous chips so that the lighter brown from before will kind of appear around the edges and it gives you that illusion of depth now on the ribs I'm gonna make some very similar chipping effects but I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna use a foam sponge this is called sponge chipping on the sponge I have a little bit of the saddle brown the lighter brown we used at the very beginning and I'm just almost like it's almost like dry brushing you only want a little bit of paint on the sponge and I'm just tapping it along the ribs here 
and the actual texture of the sponge will basically like cheat and make chipping patterns and wear patterns and it looks really good. This is a very useful effect on raised details like this because the raised edges catch the sponge and that's where you get that nice chipping pattern. If a little bit gets on the surface of the panels it's fine, it'll blend in with the rest of the chips. But I'm just mainly focusing this around the ribs and I'm going to do a little bit on the inside and so on. Now I'm doing the same thing, but I've got now the darker red color, hull red. And like before when we did the two-tone chipping with those scrapes, I'm doing the same thing here. Now I'm getting two-tone chipping with the foam sponge chipping effect. And you can see there how nice that two-tone chipping looks. It gives you a real nice looking worn finish. On the inside of the gondola body, I'm just gonna roughly paint with the lighter rust color, saddle brown. Just, you know what, I'm just getting decent coverage, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm taking, once again, the darker red color, hull red, and I'm painting in some little scrapes and scratches, a lot like what we did on the sides, but this is more to simulate loads shifting around inside there and scraping up the bottom. It's very impressive how much realism you can get using only two colors of paint here light rust and dark rust you can get nice deep chipping effects all over the model and nice scraping inside here as well now let's take a look at the model with the completed chipping effects as you can see the second round of darker red chipping inside the previous chips has had a very nice effect on making these chips look a lot more deep and rusty inside the body of the gondola using the same two colors we've got a very similar rusty effect going with some nice scrapes and so on and also, of course, over the ribs along the top there, all over the sides, using, again, the same two colors, it looks really, really good. So, so far in this video, we've only used, actually, you know, these three acrylic paints, light green for fade, and then two colors for the chipping, and then I used the oil paint for the dust effects. And I guess I used a couple of paint brushes and a piece of foam sponge. All pretty straightforward and we have a very amazing looking result. Well, I guess I also used these three paints when I was painting the graffiti earlier, but that's entirely optional. Speaking of graffiti, we're gonna go in and add the second layer of more fresh graffiti. The previous stuff is obviously looking more faded with the dust applied over top, so now we can add some more fresh graffiti and make the car look like it's had a long and very graffitied service life. I'm tracing out uh, graffiti based off a photo, and I'm using a pencil here to kind of map it out. I find that using the pencil really helps to make sure you're not going to completely misjudge the size of it. And then now I'm painting it with some st still just AK Gen 3, building it up in a couple of thin layers of paint to make sure I get smooth coverage. And then I paint some red around the outsides. I'm just basing this off a photo. A couple of white touch-ups here and there to make sure everything is looking crisp. And then I go in and add some black to make it have some depth and three-dimensionality or whatever graffiti artists do. I'm still not great at graffiti, I can't really do it without a reference, but it's really just no different than painting anything else, right? Once I finished painting it, I used the back of a hobby blade just to make some quick scrapes and make it look like it's been worn and, and it make it blend more with the rest of the surface of the model with all the chipping. And then like before I paint a few other small scribbly tags and stuff all over the car just in random spots kind of copying some photos but not really copying them. As before these don't have to make any sense because nobody cares. I, I, I don't read graffiti. I just see some scribbles and dots and stuff and I just try to copy as best I can. But like these are meaningless, but you'll see in a second the result is still really good. With the, with the second layer of graffiti on there you can see that we have, um, well, you can sometimes see cars like this in the wild. You know what I'm talking about. They're just like a rolling rusty mess covered in graffiti. And with my modern era railroad, this is exactly what I was going for. And again, if you don't like graffiti, just skip these steps and just do the rest of the weathering and you'll have a nice result. 
you can see I left one of my sides a lot less tagged. So if I'm feeling less graffiti-y, I can just flip it around on my shelf layout and look at this side for that day. Now I'm going to use my airbrush and I'm going to take a little bit of this grayish brown paint and we're going to apply a little bit of road grime and dust along the bottom. If you remember at the very beginning of the video there was already a little bit of this on the model from years ago. I'm just kind of redoing it. Um, the goal here is to have the same result but also have that go over a little bit of the graffiti and also kind of catch the, the things we added like the brake lines and the repainted ladders and the coupler cut bars, make them look more blended in with the rest of the finish. I also painted a little bit of it inside as well, just to make it look a little bit dusty and dirty in there. So you can see I didn't get that much coverage, I'm just trying to make it look a little dirty and dusty. You could also use a powder pastel for this as well if you want, if you don't have an airbrush for example. I'm just making the car look a little bit more dusty, and you can see it looks really good. Especially over the end frames here, you can see that we have nice kick up spray and everything's looking a lot dusty, like the coupler and the brake line and everything else. I'm using a weathering powder here, very briefly, just to add a little bit of rust on the, uh, the springs and the bearings of the trucks here. This is just a really basic and quick step. But it has a nice looking result actually. This is this is a very small thing that has a very powerful effect on the model. I'm gonna use these smoke box graphics paint out blanks to paint some repatched areas over the graffiti before we apply the safety striping later. Uh, this is entirely because I model the present day and they have reflective striping on all the cars. If you don't model the present day, if you model the 90s, you can just skip this. These are waterside decals, so you just soak them in water for a minute, take them off the paper, apply them, and then brush on a little bit of decal setting solution to make sure they stick nicely onto the model. Since all of our weathering and everything is done, I'm going to apply the matte varnish now. I'm using VMS matte varnish which I think is the best matte varnish. I just airbrush it on straight from the bottle in a heavy coat and it, it, it floods the surface and it looks like it's going to go horribly wrong but you just spray it on, let it dry and it dries dead flat. As before, like I mentioned, uh, we're going to apply some safety striping. I've got smoke box graphics ones here, two different colors and I'm just going to apply them again based off reference photos. I'm using two colors so that I can have the uh, one color like here for the older ones and then over those repatched areas I can apply a different color to make it have a little bit more of a story. You know, they, they repatched over the graffiti and applied some fresh stripes so a different color. And now here is the result of all of our weathering and graffiti on the gondola. I'm very pleased with how this came out. As you can see, one side is less graffiti than the other. That side shows off the scraping and chipping and everything we did there a little better. And I'm actually very, very pleased with this result. The basic weathering, not including colors for graffiti, was just the light green, two colors for chipping, brown for dust, also an oil paint for dust, and then the powder we used as well. So that's really only just six products. You can see just how effective that two-tone chipping of the rust really looks. So you don't need a huge range of complicated products to get a nice weathering result as you saw in this video. You can use limited palette and just some basic techniques and still have a very convincing result in the end. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, post them on below and I'll read through them all and answer them as best as I can. If you want to support my work, you can do so on Patreon with the link on screen now. If you can't support me, I understand. Uh, just appreciate that you can give the video a like and if you're interested in seeing more, you can subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Until then, goodbye, stay safe, and happy modeling.